When we took an oath to do no harm, that should imply do no financial harm. We make it cheaper than a cell phone. If you can afford a cell phone, you can afford the most basic aspect of, of healthcare delivery in the United States. The patients of doctors William Crouch and Lee Gross know exactly what services will cost before they receive them, a radical concept only in healthcare. They don't have to deal with benefits packages, coverage denials, hidden costs, in-network versus out-of-network, or any surprises whatsoever. Instead, their patients buy the medical equivalent of a Netflix subscription. We charge $75 a month for an adult, $30 a month for one child, and $15 a month for each additional child. After that, we charge nothing for the services that are provided in our office. Doctors Crouch and Gross of Northport, Florida are pioneers in a growing national movement called Direct Primary Care. Physicians around the country who are tired of dealing with insurance companies when it comes to routine medical services have exited the traditional system and are saying that they can provide better care at a lower price by charging their patients a nominal monthly fee directly. COVID-19 has pushed many doctor's offices, which have been hard hit by the pandemic, to start doing telemedicine for the first time. And insurance companies and the government have started paying them for this service, for now. But direct primary care practices have proven far more agile and responsive to the needs of patients. They're demonstrating that making American healthcare flexible and affordable requires abandoning the use of third-party insurance for routine care and adopting a free market approach. Direct primary care is about as close to a free market in healthcare as you've ever seen in our country. You know, people say that, we, well, we tried, we tried free market. It didn't work. That's why we need the government to take over. That's why we need a single payer healthcare system. We have never tried a true marketplace in, in healthcare. When I was in a fee for service system, I felt like I was playing a game of whack-a-mole with Medicare. We had to find ways of doing as much stuff to as many people as possible to generate as much revenue just to pay for the computer systems that I needed to bill Medicare so that I could get paid. And you kept seeing that people were being denied care and a lot of it was cost prohibitive. They were able to afford their insurance premiums, but then they couldn't afford the needed test. And every time I found a way to prop up and be able to generate revenue to support this monstrosity that we were required to build, Medicare would knock the knees out from under us and take away that revenue source to where eventually we just said, you know what, no more. Direct primary care practices are demonstrating that routine health services covered by Medicare and insurance companies cost so little that most patients could easily afford them out of pocket. So how did this third-party payer system develop? The government created it through the tax system. During World War II, the IRS started allowing employers to provide health insurance as a form of pre-tax compensation. But if employees purchased their own health care, they had to use after-tax dollars. This led to a system in which insurance companies and large healthcare providers negotiate prices behind closed doors, leaving patients out of the mix. What we have done is we've essentially disrupted that entire paradigm because we've said, let's have price transparency. Let's show people what these services actually cost because they do have a dollar value. You can put a price tag on this thing. We've proven that. Today, there are approximately 1,400 independent direct primary care practices with a presence in 49 states. Virtually all of them charge a subscription fee that's between $50 and $100 monthly to consult with the doctor at any time, in person or from home. Crouch and Gross provide routine services like preventative checkups, EKGs, minor procedures like biopsies, joint injections, removal of cysts and small cancers, and some urgent care such as sewing up lacerations and splinting uncomplicated fractures at no extra charge. In-office tests like those for strep and pregnancy are included as well. If a test needs to leave the office, patients pay cash prices that Gross and Crouch have negotiated on their behalf. If you ask the lab, what they'll tell you is the most expensive thing that they do is not the lab, it's the cost of the human labor associated with processing those claims and getting paid. So if we eliminate their number one line item expense in their, in their service delivery, then we can bring those prices way down. And that's exactly what we saw. We would see 95% discounts on the laboratory services. According to a survey conducted in July, 78% of physicians had seen a decline in patient volume because of COVID-19. In March, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services issued a temporary waiver stating that Medicare would pay the same rate for certain kinds of video telemedicine visits as in-person ones, but the types of visits it would cover changed over the course of the year and are still changing. Whether or not insurance companies and the government continue covering online visits after the pandemic has no bearing on Crouch and Gross's practice, and they didn't have to wait for insurance companies and the government to okay telemedicine in the first place. And we immediately flipped a switch, and instantly from uh, in-person practice, we were in online practice. 
We were a parking lot practice. We did whatever we had to do in order to get the patient the proper care at the proper time. Telemedicine has added complexity to the billing process. That has no impact on Crouch and Gross. So we didn't need to wait for Blue Cross to convene a committee to pay for telemedicine services. I didn't need to wait two months or three months for Medicare to create a new billing code in order for me to provide technology visits for a patient. I just did it. For what Medicare pays for a single technology visit, I provide two to three months of unlimited technology visits, unlimited office visits, unlimited home visits, unlimited email visits. And so, you know, the model is, again, pandemic tested. It's proven that it's actually a superior model uh, because we have the built-in flexibility to do what we need at the time we need it. 32 states and D.C. have passed laws requiring insurance companies to reimburse doctors at the same rate for telemedicine visits as they do for comparable in-person visits. Crouch and Gross say that shouldn't be decided by lobbyists, lawmakers, or government administrators. Prices should be set through market competition. The very first time I went to Washington and made a presentation on direct primary care, I gave it to a group of physicians. And after I gave my presentation on our practice and what we were doing, the doctor raised his hand and said, what happens if some doctor sets up right next door to you and charges $40 a month? And I said, that's an excellent question. I said, because if the first question out of the audience is what are we gonna do when we bring down the price of healthcare, we're onto something because that question has never been asked in the American healthcare system ever. And I said, but here's what's gonna happen. I said, that doctor and I are going to have to compete on price and quality. And I'm gonna to have to justify why my price is twice as much. Um, maybe I provide better service, maybe I'm just better trained, have better credentials, have more experience, but something tangible is gonna to have to justify that or I'm gonna to have to lower my prices and to compete or I'm gonna lose patience to the person down the street. The myth is that profit by its mere definition is it does not belong in the American healthcare system and, and it's evil and it creates perverse incentives. The key to making that profit work is again, that elimination of that third party in the middle of that profit, which just starts up costs, but adds no value.